Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner. Welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. They're going to be posted all over the place. Make sure you do that so you get notified when I do all of this testing, because today we're talking about tuning. We're talking about changes in air fuel. We're talking about changes in timing and which one of those is more important. We change the air fuel from 13 to 1 to 12 to 1 to 11 and down to 10 to 1. Then we change the timing from 29 degrees to 24 to 20 and ultimately down to 17 degrees which of those things made the most change in power and which one is most important? Let's find out. Before we get going on our test of air fuel and timing on our LS application, we need to take a look at our test motor because it's very important. First of all, Junkyard 5.3 liter L33 all aluminum motor in a Brian Tooley Racing red hot camshaft. I'll go ahead and post a photo here of all of the cam specs so you can see stock truck manifold, stock throttle body, 799 heads, valve spring upgrade, long tube headers, Holly HP management system, and we run this thing the way we normally do with no accessories and no inlet and obviously a free-flowing exhaust setup. There you go. That's our test motor, and then we alter the air fuel and alter the timing. So let's find out what happens. So you can see when we're making the air fuel changes, I just go in, I grab the whole range that we're testing at, starting from 2500 all the way out past 8000, grab the whole top end, which is basically wide open throttle, and I just add or subtract a bunch of fuel there depending on what we want the air fuel to be. You can do it individually, individual cells and stuff, but I just grab all that, I add, you know, 10 clicks to it change the air fuel a whole bunch like we saw on the graph and you can see what the effect is. Now we do the same thing on timing. This one doesn't have too much of a curve. We start out at 24 degrees. For most of the curve it's 29. We've tried various curves on this. This seems to work pretty well. But what I'll do is just grab all of that and reduce it down. We're going to show what the effect timing is. So get ready to make a pull. You can follow the timing. Follow the little bouncing ball. Rolling into it. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out the effect of air fuel ratio. We're going to start off with what is kind of an optimized air fuel curve for this LS. And as we'll see, <laughs> that has a fairly broad range because there's lots of optimized air fuel ratios. And looking at this curve, the first thing you might think, well, there's a big spiky part at 3200 RPM or 3100 RPM. What's going on? Well, first thing you have to realize, this scale is half an air fuel point. As we put more scales up here, you'll see this is actually fairly flat. And also you'll see that the change from 12.45 to 12.95 has zero effect on power. Not only that, even if we go to dramatically richer, it also has no effect on power. And that's exactly why I did this test. So this was the first of our air fuel curves. And what I did, as I showed in the video, I just went in and grabbed all the cells and added a bunch of fuel and made it richer. And this was the result. So we're going from, you know, near 13 to one. Here's our 12 to one curve. And now you can kind of see, I'm gonna move myself out of the way so that you can see a little bit better. I have to move myself down here or maybe way up here. Yeah, we'll go up here. So here's what happened when we went to, we got 13 and 12, this is 11. And finally, we put the air fuel in the 10. So you can see we have some pretty dramatic changes in air fuel. And the question is now, what happens to power? You can see these are fairly dramatic. We, we have almost three tenths of an air fuel point change. <laughs> Not three tenths, three full points of air fuel difference. So now let's see what happened to power. So what I'll do is we'll go ahead and get rid of this. We'll go to power. We'll open up our curve. I'm gonna get rid of the fuel flow because that will make our scale a little bit better. 
So this is our 13 to one air fuel making 450 horsepower and 414 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we went to 12 to one, almost nothing. In fact, maybe a little bit more, 452 or so, 414 foot-pounds. Again, we're splitting hairs here. This is this is next to nothing. For a full air fuel point change, we'll go to our, so our 11 to 1. Again, not even a huge change. In fact, I'm going to have to zoom in here so that you can actually see what the change is. There's a little bit, but we're talking about... Um, 451 to 453. So we're talking about two horsepower. Elsewhere, it might be a little bit more. 446 versus 449, 450. So three or four horsepower there. Again, just going from 11 to 1 to 13 to 1, you're talking a handful of horsepower, two or three horsepower. So that's how far off you can be. In fact, it wasn't until we actually put the air fuel into the tens where we started seeing a fairly significant change in power. And even then, we only went, we only dropped the power down to 441 horsepower. So we lost nine or 10 horsepower putting the air fuel into the tens. So 13, 12, 11, essentially making the same power, which is why I tell people time and time again, when it comes to air fuel ratio, you have to make a dramatic change in air fuel before you're gonna make a significant change in power. But now let's take a look at timing. Now that we've taken a look at the changes in power offered by changes in air fuel ratio, it's time to look at see what happens when we change the ignition timing. We're going to start off, this is our curve with our 5.3 liter at roughly 29 degrees of timing. Now we did have a little bit of a curve in it and you saw that on the previous video clips, but we'll call this 29 degrees of timing. But here's what happened when we dropped down from 29 to 27 degrees, or I take that back <laughs> down to 24 degrees. And then here's what happened when we dropped it down even further from 24 down to 20 degrees, pretty significant change going from 24 to 20. And then finally the lowest timing value that we ran total ignition timing up at the horsepower peak was 17 degrees. So we went from 451 horsepower at 29 degrees all the way down to 397 horsepower at 20 degrees, or at 17 degrees. At 20 degrees, we made 419 horsepower. And at 24 degrees, we made 441. So you see, we didn't see a big drop going from 29 down to 24. You know, that, that's about 10 horsepower. But as we got lower and lower in timing, we started losing more and more power. And note that we, get, we lost a lot more power up top with changes in timing than we lost down low. Down low, we're talking about going from 328 foot-pounds at 3,000 RPM down to 293 foot-pounds. So we saw much more significant power gains than we lost in torque. That's because the, the motor needs less timing at lower engine speeds than it, than it does at higher engine speeds. So you're gonna see a bigger change from the timing. But here we saw a pretty dramatic change in power from the timing change, unlike what we saw from air fuel. So if you're going to be concerned about one thing rather than the other, you should actually be concerned about both. But if you miss on the air fuel, not very much is gonna happen. If you miss on the timing and you don't have enough timing, obviously it's definitely gonna drop power. But on the other end of that scale, if you have too much timing, you might not have a motor. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about this video on tuning, changing the air fuel on our LS from 13, 12, 11, 10 to one, and our timing from 29, 24, 20, and ultimately down to 17 degrees. What did we learn? Well, we learned the following thing. You can miss by quite a bit on the air fuel, and the thing is obviously still gonna run, and not only that, it's obviously gonna make fairly good power. We change the timing a lot, also, you are going to lose power when you put the timing down at you know extreme levels where you would normally be associated with boosted applications down at 17 or even 20 degrees. If you run that on your NA motor, you are going to lose power. But the thing is, it's still gonna run, it's still going to work. 
even when you miss by a lot. And that's very important for the tuners out there. And they think that, oh no, you only have 17 degrees or you have the air fuel at 10 to one, it's not gonna work. No, it does. It will actually run, it'll actually run fairly well. The only thing that will happen if you don't have enough timing in it, you're gonna lose power. If you miss by a lot on the air fuel, you might lose a little bit of power, but it's still gonna work. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.